All right, I woke up at the East Side Guest Houses and uh, I stayed in a, the room behind me called Cloud Ripper. There's six bunk beds in there and a bathroom and it's actually set up really nice. Like there's, all the bunk beds are marked, they're numbered and there's a drawer under the bottom bunk. So for example, if it's one and two, there will be a drawer one and two under the bunks one and two. And then in the bathroom, there's six hooks and they're labeled one, one through six. So um, it's, it's just really nicely done. I'll see if I can get a shot of it later when people are not sleeping. Uh, uh, but there's no towel, so I'm gonna go figure out how to get a towel. It really is a beautiful setup they have here. This cool little pond. They've got lots of areas to just chill. So like, regardless of how big your group is, I'm sure you could find a place for your group to hang out. I'm really digging the main space. Last night we all got together and, last night we all got together and had food. So we, uh, we, we had some people grilling here. We had some beers. Yeah, it's really beautiful. All right, I'm gonna take you the other way back to the room so you can see some of the cool stuff out here. Like, all of them are just so cute. So I really like this setup. And uh, I wish I could do something like this for snowboarding. And I just talked to one of the staff members, uh, Marlena, and she told me people do. People come out here and they go to Mammoth and they'll drive 45 minutes to get here because it's cheaper here than staying in Mammoth. And I believe that Mammoth is super expensive. So I think this year I might be hanging out here um, with a bunch of skiers and snowboarders and because I live in Vegas, I'll just I'll just drive out to Bishop, stay here, and then drive 40 minutes to Mammoth and just have a great year doing that maybe. So yeah, really nice place. But anyways, uh, I got my coffee and I got my towel. She told me there's a towel on my bed. She's probably right. It was late last night when I got in there, so I didn't even know. But I'm gonna get a shower. I'm gonna get rolling. Um, actually, let me get my intro. Hey, I'm Danny, aka Topless. I'm hiking the Pacific Crest Trail. Uh, I'm currently in Bishop, this is day two, and I gotta get out of here. So I'm gonna do a resupply, and I think either catch, catch a ride or catch a bus back to Independence and back to the trailhead for Curasarge Pass. It's gonna be quite a hike, I'm not exactly sure. It's a quite a hike to get back to the PCT from just about anywhere in this area. It's gonna take me about a day to get back to the PCT and then start making progress again. So I'm not sure how far I'm gonna go before I decide to dip out again to find another town. I've already noticed that there are a couple other people here from further up the trail. So it's possible that I might go say 100, 100 miles, 120 miles and get back off the trail, come, come back to Bishop for a resupply and maybe even stay here again. So we'll see how that goes. There's a couple of hikers on their way out. 7 a.m. and they're making their way back to the trail. That's Pepper Jack and I forget the person's name. Oh, and we've got two hikers walking up. Let's go meet them. So that was uh, French Fry and Caboose that I just ran into. I haven't seen them since the Deep Creek Hot Springs. So that was really cool. Um, and they left me, they handed me a, a bag to give to the hiker box. Uh, this in this hostel because they stayed at the other hostel and they're on their way to the bus to get back to Independence. <laughs> wow, they must have gotten a box mailed to them or something because this is like half a resupply right here. I think I'm just gonna grab, grab things that I like, put my name on it, put the rest in the hiker box, which is over here. And uh, wow, yeah, this is a great start to my day. All right, I'm doing my resupply and I'm also dropping some some weight so check it out this this stuff's getting thrown in a hiker box these are some sandals that i i picked up as soon as from natalie uh from the johnsons from wisconsin she left them behind and i've been wearing them since then and i'm gonna leave them behind too i got this really cool collapsible 
uh, funnel that I used a lot in the beginning, but I use a lot less now because I stopped putting all my packets of electrolytes in one Ziploc bag and just started using emergencies, which are very easy to pour into a bottle, so I don't need this anymore. I realized that my buff can very easily be turned into a sleep mask just by wearing it like a hat or just wearing it like a band, like a headband and pulling it over your eyes, so I don't need my sleep mask anymore. This, uh, I got a brush, it's very tiny, it's pretty light, but the idea was just something to help wash up if I'm on the trail. And I've basically never used it, I've never, it just don't need it. So your hands in water are good enough. I've got this, oh, this is killing me. This tripod, I, ke I kept meaning to use this. Like I kept meaning to like put it on my pack, on the straps and just like get some footage of walking down the trail and stuff. But I just have not been using it and uh, I'm gonna let it go. And then this is uh, here in California. This is a shopping bag that I just happened to fold up really nice. Here in California, the shopping bags are really thick and they make you pay for them. So having like a, a folded up shopping bag in my bag has been great if I want to do like a quick run and get some water or something like that. But I've already got one in my bag, so this is an extra. So I'm going to leave that in the hiker box. So all of this over here, all of this is going to fit in that bag. I promise you. And over here is my resupply. I've got two shopping bags full of stuff. Um, this is what French fry and caboose gave me this morning. I'm probably going to put most of it into the hiker box up here. But this and this are going to fit into this bear can. So, yeah. Let's see. Let's get going. There you go. It all fits. Hey, I'm Danny, aka Topless, and I've got a hiker tip for t you today which involves scoops and water streams, or water sources, I should say. All right, sometimes you get to a stream and you can't get your bottle or your water bladder into it. So you have to use a scoop. So you'll take something like this, this is the top of a water bottle that I just cut off with my pocket knife, and you'll, you'll dip it in the creek or in the stream and get a scoop out and then you'll put it into your, your water bladder and you'll just keep doing that until you're full so you can actually get water in the desert or water from a stream that's not deep enough to just dunk your whole bladder into. I've been using this one. This one got me 700 miles through the desert. Uh, it, and you can tell it's a little dirty. Sorry about that. I happen to run to somebody using one of these. So this is from a Sawyer water filter. When you buy the water filter, it comes with two of these, some hoses and some adapters. And these um, are not the greatest. They don't last very long. They tend to fail right about here. So these are in hiker boxes just about everybody, everywhere. In the beginning, you know, down near Mexico, um, everybody was so excited about these. But you get 100 miles in and all these are breaking right here. Everyone started to just not use them anymore and just started ditching them. Uh, so these are easy to find is what I'm trying to say. If you cut this right here, this bottom half can become a scoop that folds totally flat compared to this guy. So I saw another hiker using that and I'm gonna do that right now. All right, so there you go. I got a scoop. The scoop is about the same size as this one. I purposely cut it, cut it here and not cut it here because you don't want a giant scoop. If you could, if you could fit a giant scoop into whatever you're trying to do, then you'd be using your water bladder. But, so you want a smaller scoop. So I've got a scoop here. It now folds totally flat and is easy to pack. And uh, yeah, I'm actually excited to have it and excited to use it and say bye bye to that thing. By the way, I just wanted to throw out there. Um, I've got two playlists now. Uh, one is basically my vlog for the PCT. Um, it's my whole journey. I've basically been doing a video every day. Um, so you get to see all the little details that might be interesting if you're ever planning on doing the hike. And I've got this other playlist that has been nothing but hiker tips that I started around mile 500. So I don't know which playlist you're looking at right now, but I'm just letting you know there are two playlists on my channel and you can go look for them and you can go through all the tips if you want or you can go through all the wonderful struggle, <laughs> successes struggle, if you'd like. So I'll catch you guys later. So we got one last visit to the bakery and I found All Star, yay!
Oh yeah, got two sandwiches this morning. This thing's amazing. It's like one of those lacy cookies. It's like almond, it's like a chewy almond, but it's gigantic, rolled up, and this is buttercream on the inside. Oh, dark chocolate peanut butter cup. What do you got over here? We got a muffin. Uh, got... It's like a bacon cheese log thing. We got nice. a muffin, we got a lace thing, I got a sandwich. Sweet. Hiker hunger. Oh, hiker hunger's the best. I could eat all this stuff and not worry. <laughs> All right, I'm walking out to catch a bus at 1.15 from Bishop to Independence, and then I'm gonna hitch back to the trailhead for Kearsarge Pass. Should take me, I don't know, two hours maybe, to get back to the trailhead. So Cactus just said, Look at where we're going. It doesn't look smart. <laughs> yep. So apparently there's like thunder and lightning warnings until four at the pass we're going to. We'll see what happens. All right, we're back at the trailhead for Kearsarge Pass. There's a waterfall right there and it was raining on the way up here. We'll see how wet it is on the hike. It's basically straight up. What was it again, Cactus? How? 2,500 feet. 2,500 feet. Over five miles. Over five miles up. So. I you got it. I got this. Uh, it's just gonna take some time. <laughs> All right. So I caught the 115 bus in Independ nope, in Bishop. Got two Independents. Hitched a ride to the trailhead. Uh, a trail angel named Magic Man showed up. Not 100% sure when I got to the trailhead. I think it was three-ish. The storm was supposed to stop at four. I walked in a, a drizzle for, I don't know <laughs> how long. Uh, I just decided it was clear enough to take off my rain stuff. And uh, my shirt's drying out now. I'm actually kind of surprised I waited too long to put my rain stuff on. My my shirt and my pack were all wet. Not all wet, but, but wettish. And uh, putting on the, the rain cape, it just locked in all that moisture. So my pack is nice and wet. My shirt was nice and wet. They're drying out now though. I'm, uh, it's about six o'clock, 6.10. I am almost to the top of Kearsarge Pass. I can see the top. And uh, I figure it's gonna be windy up there. So I thought maybe I'll shoot a quick video now instead of later. Whew. Yeah, I think I'm like 100 paces away. So, plan today is to get down the other side of the pass because I'm pretty sure you're not allowed to camp on the other side very much or in very many places. Get back to the PCT and just walk as far as I can before sunset and then uh, yeah that's the whole plan my whole food plan worked out really well I got six days of food in my beer can it's in my beer can <laughs> in my beer bear can and uh, swapping out the instant noodle for more uh, instant mashed potatoes made a lot of room so that was a nice move I uh, I also got rid of my instant coffee, so I got rid of my second cold soak. So I, I'm pretty excited. Six days of food in my bear can, way more calories than I had last time, and it's not really heavier. It's it's pretty nice. This whole hike has been surprisingly easy. Uh, let me give you a quick look down. There's down the valley behind me. Let's see over here. Down the valley below me is one of the many lakes. It's all snow melt. I'm looking forward to get on the other side, be back in the sun again, because my damp clothing is pretty dang cold. Let's see if it's windy at the pass. Alright, so this is the top of this Kearsarge Pass. Ah, I'm not sensing much wind. Oh, it's like a light breeze. Oh, beautiful. Okay, here's a look back where I came from. 
to look forward. Pretty incredible. Uh, yeah, I remember watching this in the sunset all day the other day. I'm so glad to be marching into it in the sunset today. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention was uh, I deleted all my music and all my audiobooks on the way through here last time because I was running out of space on my phone. But I got all my videos uploaded and uh, I didn't download any music, but I downloaded uh, Audible again and got a, I got a book called Stop Missing Your Life by Corey Mascara. And I got it because uh, my friend Kristen recommended it. She said that she was in the middle of reading it and it was really impactful for her. So she, she managed to text me when I was in Bishop, so I downloaded it right away and I listened to a lot of it on the way up um, on the climb, which was great. Because it, it, it's a mindfulness book and it kept me focused on just being mindful for where I am, being present. It's walking me through lots of interesting, like, um, I mean, I've come up with a lot of stuff. Walking alone for 700 miles, you gotta, like, kind of face yourself a little bit, discover some stuff. So it's been great because it's, it's got a lot of, like, step-by-step -step stuff to walk through your own stuff. Like, walk through your own trauma, walk through your own patterns, walk through your own whatever. And, uh, so yeah, how do you, um, I'm in the middle of that, thought I'd share that. I'm glad Kristen recommended it. And uh, I'll probably read it a couple times because it's the only thing I have downloaded right now. And uh, if you haven't read audiobooks, sometimes they kind of go by too fast and you have to read it more than one time to actually retain it all. So this stretch, I've got six days worth of food. I'm probably gonna listen to this book probably maybe three times. So we'll see how that goes. Actually, one thing that the book kind of made me realize, um, when I got to the summit of Mount Whitney, I had a lot of gratitude, I was pretty emotional. i have been thinking about stuff for 700 miles, and uh, I actually shot a lot of video of me talking through a lot of stuff, and ultimately I cut it. I decided that it was stuff that I needed, it wasn't stuff that needed to be shared online. Um, and I got to review it when I was in town and basically call some people and share the gratitude with them, which is really wonderful. So it's nice to have done the summit, had all these emotions come up that I've been just dragging around, um, good and bad, you know, good, bad. Actually, I'm not gonna say any emotion is bad. I'm just gonna say uh, joyful, sad, regrets, like anger, so just so many emotions. And uh, to be able to like review them when I was editing video in Bishop and now walk back through here and kind of decompress from being in society um, and have the book kind of walk me through a bunch of exercises and stuff to just, uh, how do you say it? Just, just really process it a little bit. So yeah, I just want to say like the video of me at the top of Mount Whitney had a lot more footage and uh, I decided to cut it and I'm glad I did, but also Watching it again, I gave it's like giving myself a message, which was great. So now I'm getting a chance to process a lot of that stuff. So uh, I'm enjoying the book. So thank you, Kristen. I really appreciate the recommendation. And uh, can't wait to talk about it with you next time I'm in town, about six days from now. <laughs> I like the way this path kind of disappears in front of me. So I'm taking a slightly different trail back to the PCT. And you can see these hikers here. That's the trail I took last time to get out of here. So this time I'm much higher up, but take a look at the scale. And then here's the lake that I walked past next, last time, but I'm way above this time. Pretty incredible. All right, it's 7.30. I just got back to the PCT at, and I'm at mile marker 790. So we'll see how far I actually get today considering the whole walk out <laughs> to the trailhead and the whole walk back from the trailhead uh, just doesn't count as far as mileage on the PCT. <laughs> so what is that? That's like, I think it's eight miles in, eight miles out with all that elevation change. So go. <laughs> Fun times. <laughs> so 
So I just ran into Cactus. He's just set up his tent and check out this incredible view and dinner. <laughs> Brilliant. All right, so I found some water and I found Cooper and Morningstar. So we're all camped out. You can't see anybody because it's so dark. But also there's this amazing sunset behind me, yay.